Hello kids, welcome to Rapid Gyan. So today we are going to solve exercise 1.2. Okay, exercise 1.2. So let's start with your first question. The first question is saying that express each number as the product of its prime factor. So it's very easy. But still I will do this. So here is 140. So 140 you will have to find its prime factor. So 270. Then 2 it's 35. Then next is next it will go by uh, not by 2 not by 3 then it will go by 5 it's 7 then 7 it's 1 so prime factor of 140 will be how will you write 140 is equal to 2 times 2 times 5 times 7 or you can also write it as 2 square times 5 times 7 okay so this i have already taught you in the last my last video so hope all of you have gone through my last video those who have not gone through the introduction video of exercise 1.2 please 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 go through that video and then watch this video okay because might be there are there are some questions where i will be using some logic and you guys will not understand that logic so it's very important to watch that previous video you can find the link of the previous video in the description section below okay so let's solve this one uh, next question your next question is 156 so how will you find the value of 156 so 156 is uh, this is first divided by 2 so 2 it will come 7 8 then again divisible by 2 so it will be 3 9 39 then 39 will go by not by 2 so i hope you guys know the divisibility rule by 2 by 3 by 5 okay so by 2 it's a simple the unit digit of the number should have the even number by 3 means the sum of all the digits should divisible by 3 so in this case it's 39 so 9 plus 3 is 12 and 12 is divisible by 3 so this number will always be divisible by 3 so it will divide by 3 so you will get 13 and 13 is a prime number so here it's 13 and 1 so how will you write 156 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3 times 13 or you can write it like this 2 square times 3 times 13 okay next one is your 3825 3825 so let's first find its sum because it's not divisible by 2 so let me find its sum so 5 plus 2 5 plus 2 7 7 plus 8 15 15 plus 3 18 and 18 is completely divisible by 3 so let's divide it by 3 so 3 so i will divide i will get 1 then 2 then 7 then 5 okay it's again divisible by 3 so i will get 4 2 5 fine then it's now it's divisible by 5 not by 3 because see 4 plus 2 is 6 6 plus 5 11 and 11 is not divisible by 3 so this number will always be not divisible by 3 so now it will be divisible by 5 so if i divide by 5 i will get 8, 5, 85. Then again, if I will divide it by 5, then I will get 17. And then again, I will divide by 17. So I will get 1. So what's the value I got for 3825? So I will write it over here. So 3825 is equal to 3 times 3 times 5 times 5 times 17, which you can write it like 3 square into 5 square into 17 good now the next is 5005 so 5005 you can see that it's not divisible by 2 it's not divisible by 3 because 5 plus 5 10 and 10 is not divisible by 3 so it will be divisible by 5 so i will get 1001 okay now this 1001 it will be not by 5 then it's uh, it will be divisible by 7 so if you divide it by 7 what you will get you will get 1 4 3 and then again 143 is divisible by 11 so you will get 13 then again it's divisible by 13 and you will get 1 so here i will write 5005 is equal to 5 times 7 times 11 times 13 okay so as, as in the question it's saying that you will have to find the product of its prime factor means you will have to do prime factorization correct will have to do prime factorization so that's why we are doing it over here prime factorization hope all of you are clear okay next question is 7429 let's solve this also 7429 
So okay, so this is this number will be as it's very big now. The uh, nine plus two, eleven, eleven plus four, fifteen, fifteen plus seven, twenty-two, not by two. Oh, so actually it will first it will go by seventeen, not before that. So from the seventeen I will get four thirty-seven, and after this it will go by nineteen. So this this one is a simple division. Okay, so I'm not going into the deep. So it's twenty three, then it's by twenty three, and you will get one. So here I can write it as seven four two nine is equal to seventeen times nineteen times twenty three. Okay, so here I have written the prime factorization of all all the numbers. It's one forty, one fifty six, then three eight two five, then five zero zero five, and seven four two nine. Hope you guys understand this. If not, please ask your doubts in the comment section. Let's go to the next question. And your next question is saying, find the LCM of the following pair of integers and verify that LCM and SCF equal to product of the two numbers. So hope you guys remember that we have uh, gone through one theorem. That's not theorem actually. That's one mathematical equation. That equation says that LCM and SCF of two numbers is equal to the product of those two numbers. So we are going to first find the LCM and SCF of these two numbers, and we will verify that statement. Okay, so let's start with your first question. So first question is let's find its SCF and LCM. So first question is your twenty six. So let's do the prime factorization. So it's two, thirteen, and it's thirteen. It's one. Then if I'm going for the ninety one, so what I will get? For ninety one will be divisible by first by seven. So after that it will come thirteen, and then it's again thirteen and one. <clears throat> so let's write it over here. Twenty six. Twenty six is equal to two times thirteen, and ninety one. Ninety one is equal to seven times thirteen. So how we find the HCF? Highest common factor. Highest common factor is means common factor between twenty six and nineteen. So what is the common factor? So common factor, as you can see over here, is this one. This one is your common factor. So just one common factor. So your answer will be thirteen. So as I have told you, what's the definition of HCF? HCF means the product of the least power of common factor. What's the definition of HCF? Product. I'll write it over here. Product of the least least power of Common factors. Okay, so here you can see what's your common factor. So common factor is just thirteen, and its least power means power is just one. So your SCF will become thirteen. Now what what is LCM? LCM is product of highest power of common factor with remaining uncommon factor. So I will write over here that product of highest power of Of the highest power of common factors, highest power of common factors, product of highest power power factors and remaining factors and uh, remaining factors. Okay, so from this table, you will see. Okay, what's the product? Uh, what is the product of highest power means first i will write over here 13 and then 13 is multiplied by remaining factors which are 2 and 7 so which will give me 13 times 2 times 7 it will give me 182 okay so now we got the scf and lcm now we'll have to verify this statement that the lcm and hcf is equal to so i will just multiply lcm and hcf so what is your l uh, LCM is 182, and LCM is uh, HCF is 13. So 182 times 13, if you will multiply, you will get 2366. What will you get? 2366. And again, if you multiply 26 and 91, so 26 and 91, you will get the same number 2366. So what you are seeing, guys, you are seeing that the LCM and HCF of two numbers, if you are going to multiply LCM. With HCF of the two numbers, your output will be same as if you multiply those two numbers separately. Means LCM and HCF is equal to product of 
two numbers. Okay, let's go to your second question. Your second question is saying five one zero and ninety two. I will go to the next board. So next board is saying. So what you will have to do? The two numbers are five one zero and ninety two. So let's find the first HCF and LCM. So I will just do the prime factorization of five one zero. Well, do so first it will go by two. I will get two five five. Okay. And it will go by three. I will get eight five. Then it will go by five, and then I will get seventeen. Then it will go by seventeen. I will get one. Very good. Now I will do for the ninety two. For the ninety two, I will get two first. Then it's forty six. Then I will get two first. I will get twenty three. Then I will do it with twenty three, and I will get one. Okay, because twenty three is a prime number. So let's write this factor over here. So five one ten I can write as two times three times five times seventeen, and ninety two I can write it like this: two times two times twenty three. Okay. So what will be your HCF? The common factor I can just see only one common factor. So my HCF will become two, and let's find the LCM. So what? The LCM says, LCM says it's a product of the highest power of the common factors and the remaining factors. So here also the highest power of the co common factor is. So see this particular thing I can write it as two to the power two times twenty three. Correct. So highest power of the common factors. So highest power of the common factor is two square. So I will write over here is two square multiplied by remaining factors. Okay. So what are the remaining factors are? Three, five, seventeen, and twenty-three. So I will write over here is multiplied by three times five times seventeen times twenty-three. So if you will multiply everything, you will your answer will be twenty-three thousand four sixty. Okay. Now we'll have to verify the second part of your question, where LCM and HCF, LCM multiplied by HCF is equal to the product of two numbers. So here, if you are going to multiply two, three, four, six, zero, which one is your LCM multiplied by its HCF two? So your answer will be double like four six nine two zero. At the same time, if you are going to multiply the two numbers five one zero multiplied by ninety two, you will get the same answer four six nine two zero. That's it. That's your solution. Now, what's the third part of the question? Is saying third part of the question is saying three thirty six and fifty. Okay, let me go to the next board. Goes three thirty six and fifty four. Three thirty six and fifty four. Okay, so let me find the <coughs> prime factorization of three thirty six. So it will divided by two. I will get one sixty eight. Then again, it will divided by two. I will get eighty four. Then again, it's divided by two. I will get forty two. Then again, it's divided by two. I will get twenty one. Then it's divided by three. I will get seven. Then again, it's seven. I will get one. Good. Let's do of the fifty four. For the fifty four, first it will divided by two. I will get. Twenty-seven, then three, nine, three, 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 one. Okay, so we'll have to do the same thing. Three thirty-six is equal to how? See how many times two are there? Four times. So it's two to the power of four multiplied by three multiplied by seven. And for fifty-four, if I will write, it's just two multiplied by three cube. Okay, so what will be my HCF? Okay, so what's the definition of HCF? The definition of HCF says that the product of the least power, product of the least power of the common factor. So in this, you can see that two is the common factor and three is the common factor. So what's the least power of two? The least power of two is this one, means just two. And what's the least power of three? This one, means just three. So it's two times three, which is equal to six. Got it? Now let's find the LCM. So LCM says that the product of the highest power of the common factor, product of the highest power of the common factor multiplied by other remaining factor. 
So what's the highest uh, common factor is two. So what's the highest power of two? Highest power of two is four. So two to the power four multiplied by what's the highest power of three? Three. So three to the power three. What are the remaining factors? Nothing but seven. So if you multiply this, so this is two to the power uh, four, four, sixteen, sixteen, four, sixty-four. So there are four now. So two times two times two times two. So two to the four, four to the eight, eight to the sixteen. So it's sixteen times twenty-seven times seven, which is equal to. If you are going to multiply this, you will get three zero two four. What will you get? Three zero two four. Okay. Now the next part, which where you will have to do the validation that whether LCM multiplied by HCF is equal to the product of the two numbers. I'm going to do that. So what's your LCM? Three zero two four. So here, if I will multiply three zero two four multiplied by your HCF six, it's going to give me one eight one double four. And also, if I'm going to multiply three thirty six with fifty four, it will give me the same value one eight one double four. That's your solution. Let's go to the next question. Next question is saying find the LCM and HCF of the following integer by applying the prime factorization method. Okay, this is the simplest question. Still, I will do it. Okay, so let's find the first prime factorization of twelve, fifteen, and twenty-one. So these are the smaller numbers. So you can directly write the prime factorization. So what will the prime factorization of twelve? It's two times two times three. Correct. What's the prime factorization of fifteen? So prime factorization of fifteen is three times five. What's the prime factorization of twenty-one? Prime factorization of twenty-one is three times seven. So for HCF, what you will have to do? You will have to find the common factor. So as you can see, the common factor is only three. Here, here, and here. So this one is only the common factor. So this will become your HCF will become three. Now if I go and find the LCM, so what the LCM says that I will write the common factor just one time. Which is three and the remaining factors, which are two times two times five times seven. So this is five to the ten, three to the six, ten six to the sixty, sixty into seven, which is equal to four twenty. So that's your answer. Okay, let's do the second question. So second question is saying seventeen. So seventeen is a prime number. So it's there will be no. So if when there is no Uh, factorization. So we simply write it seventeen times one. Okay, for twenty-three it will be again twenty-three is a prime number, so twenty-three times one. And twenty-nine, twenty-nine is also a prime number, so it will be twenty-nine times one. So what will be your SCF? So what's the common in this? One is common. Okay, so your one is common. So if one is common, so you can see, so your SCF will become one. So what you are getting from this that the HCF of two prime numbers or three prime prime numbers will always be one. Just remember this: the HCF of two or more than two prime numbers are always one. Okay. Now let's find the LCM. And what will be the LCM? LCM will be the product of those numbers. So LCM, you can say that LCM of Two prime numbers or more than two two prime numbers is always the product of those numbers. So LCM will be simply seventeen times twenty three times twenty nine, which is one one three three nine. Okay, let's do the third part. It's eight. Quite simple. What it will be? Two times two times two. Nine. What is the nine? It's three times three. Twenty-five. It's five times five. Okay. So here also I'm not seeing any common factor. So when you are not seeing any con common factor, always you have one. Okay. Just remember this. If there are no common factors, just add one. Multiply the factors with one because one will always be your common factor. So in this case also your common factor is just one. So what will be your SCF? Your SCF will be. One and what will your LCM? So if your HCF is one, it means it's not having any common factor. So you will have to multiply all the factors, which is two times two times two times three times three times 
times 5 times 5. So it's actually nothing. What you are doing? You are multiplying the numbers only. 8 times 9 times 25. I have written this just in order to make you understand. So 8 times 9 times 25 will give me uh, 25 uh, 200 into 9 1800 okay so that's your answer let's go to the next question so what's your next question is given that the hcf of 306 and 657 is equal to 9 so you remember the formula which we have just used in the previous question i think in this question where we are find that the LCM multiplied by HCF is equal to the product of the same numbers. So here we are going to use the same formula. What's the formula was saying? That HCF of two numbers A and B multiplied by LCM of the same numbers A and B is always equal to A times B. So this one is your formula. So we are going to use this formula to find the answer. So here I can write this that the HCF of <coughs> 306 comma 657 multiplied by LCM of 306 and 657 is equal to A times B. So what is A and B? This 306 will be your A and this 657 will be your B. So which is 306 multiplied by 657. So what's the HCF? HCF is 9. So 9 multiplied by LCM of 306 comma 657 is equal to 306 multiplied by 657 now the LCM of 306 comma 657 will become 306 multiplied by 657 this 9 will go down which is 9 so let's solve this so 9 3s are 27, then 9 4s are 36, and 34 times 657 is equal to 22338. That's your answer. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Okay, the next question is check whether 6 to the power n can end with digit 0 for any natural number n. If you guys remember, we have already done this question while we are doing the example where we will have to prove that 4 to the power n can end with any digit 0. So that's why I am saying please go and watch the intro, uh, introduction part of like previous video of exercise 1.2 which was the introduction part where I have explained the concept and also we have solved the examples. So there I have explained the concept behind this kind of question and we have solved the example where we will have to find for 4 to the power n. And while solving this that example, I've also explained for 6 to the power n, but here also I'm going to explain. Okay. So what you will have to do? This 6 to the power n, first you will have to find the prime factorization of 6. Okay, so 6 to the power n, I can write it like this: 2 times 3 to the power of n, which is equal to 2 to the power n multiplied by 3 to the power n. So this is your prime factorization. Now you'll have to see okay, with digit 0. So how will you see that whether the digit is 0 or not? So there is one technique which I have told you in the in my previous video that in order to get the digit 0, the prime factorization of that number should have one pair of 2 and 5. Okay, so for one digit 0 in the end, one digit zero in the end the prime factorization of that number should have one pair of two and five for two digits zero at the end for two digits zero at the end we need two pair of two and five two pair of two and five in the prime factorization of that number similarly for any number of like suppose you want five digits zero okay five digits zero so you need five pair of two and five both okay so here what you will have to do you just will have to find the single digit 0 at the end so your prime factorization should have one pair of 2 and 5 so here I can clearly see that I am not I am I'm getting 2 but I am not getting 5 so if I am not getting 5 it means I will not get 0 at the end so what you will write you will simply write as we do not have 2 and 5 as we do not have 
टू एंड फाइव बोथ एज फैक्टर्स करेक्ट एज विद एज फैक्टर्स सो वी कैन नॉट हैव एंड डिजिट जीरो सो वी कैन नॉट हैव एंड डिजिट जीरो दैट्स योर आंसर लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो योर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज सेइंग Explain why seven times eleven times thirteen plus thirteen is equal and seven six five four three two one plus five are composite numbers. Okay. So before going on this, just I will want to recall you guys what are composite numbers. Okay. So composite numbers are simple. I have told you those are non-prime numbers. Okay. The numbers which are not prime, they are called composite number so that's just for the memory what what's the definition so definition of composite number says that those number i will write it over here that those numbers those numbers which cannot be written as those numbers which cannot be written as can not be written as product of some numbers means some other numbers cannot be written as product of some other numbers what do you mean by other numbers some other numbers except one and number itself except one and number itself those numbers which cannot be written as product of some other numbers oh sorry my mistake this i have given the definition of prime number so here there will be slight change so those numbers which can be written i will just remove cannot part so those numbers which can be written as product of some other numbers except one and number itself so those numbers are called composite numbers I'm I'm really sorry. I have given you the definition of prime number, but uh, this is the definition of your mm -hmm. composite number. That those numbers which can be written as a product of some other number except one, and number itself, they are called composite numbers. So now now come to your question. Okay, so what's your question is saying? Your question is saying, let's take the first question. Seven times eleven times thirteen plus thirteen. So hope you guys remember the board mass rule. Okay, so. board mass what saying first you will have to open the bracket and then divide multiply add and subtract so in this question what you are saying there is a multiplication and there is a addition so first you will have to do the multiplication and then addition so if you are going to first multiply and divide so this will give you 7 plus 11 plus 13 and then plus 13 so what will be your answer can someone tell me so it will be 1014 so that's your answer So and now find the prime factorization of one zero one four. So if now if I will go and find the prime factorization of one zero one four, what it will be? This is two five zero seven. Then again I will do it three. I will get one sixty nine. Then again I will do it with thirteen and I will get thirty. So what's the prime factorization of one zero one four is saying? The prime factorization of one zero one four is Two times three times thirteen times thirteen, which means which is satisfying your definition. What's your definition? Is saying those numbers which can be written as the product of some other numbers. So one zero one four can be written as the product of some other numbers, except one and number itself. So yes, we can write it. Hence one zero one four is the composite number. Okay. So this was uh, this whole technique I have done just to make you explain that how to solve the question. But it's a very simple technique to do this question. In this, in this seven times eleven times thirteen and plus thirteen. So from these two sections, I can take thirteen common. So if I will take thirteen common, what will I get? I will get seven times eleven. Okay, plus one. Okay, so consider this a number. Consider this a number. Like seven times eleven will be your seventy-seven plus one is your 
78. So that's a number. So this is 13 times 78. So again, this 13 and 78 are neither 1014 nor 1. Means again, it's satisfying the definition. What is the definition? The numbers which can be written as a product of some other numbers except 1 and number itself. So yes, we can write 1014 as a product of some other numbers except 1 and 1014. So hence 1014 is your composite number. All right. Now we'll do the second part. Second part was saying 7654321 plus 5. Okay. Let me go to the next page. So it's 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 plus 5, I guess, correct? Plus 5, okay. So simple technique, take 5 common, what will you get? 7 times 6 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, sorry, here, one plus 1, okay. So this will give you some number, correct? This will give you some number. I'll, I'll assume they, this will give you some number called x. So this I can write as 5 times x, which is satisfying my definition. What my definition is saying? That they can be written as the product of some other numbers except one and number itself. So yes, they can, they can be written as the product of some other number which is 5 and x. So hence, we can say that this one is a composite number. So this is one method. Another method, if you want, I can tell you with the normal board mass rule which I have told you so if I am going to if you are actually going to multiply this okay so this is going to give you sorry this is going to give you 5040 which is 5040 plus 5 which is equal to 5045 now you will have to do the prime factorization of 5045 I will write over here 5045 will give me 5 and 1009 and 1009 is your prime number so it will not be divisible by any other number except 1009 so i will get one so again i can write this that this total is equal to 5 times 1009 you can see what is your x x is your 1009 okay so we can write this as the product of other other numbers except one and the number itself which was 5045 hence we can say that this whole equation is a composite number. That's it. Let's go to the next question. Okay, so your question is saying that <clears throat> there is a circular path around a sports field. Fine. Sonia takes 18 minutes to drive one round of the field while Ravi takes 12 minutes to for the same. Suppose they both start at same point and at the same time and go in the same direction okay after how many minutes will they meet again at the starting point? okay this this is very 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 easy question and which i can do it in one minute but uh, okay i will explain you guys okay, those who have not understand the question i will just going to make you understand this question otherwise the solution is very easy easy and straightforward so i'm going to make you understand the question first so what's the question is saying that Sonia takes 18 minutes. So let's write over here is Sonia. Okay. So I will just, okay, I will just, this is the starting point and Sonia is here and Sonia is just going to take one round and in one round she is taking 18 minutes. Okay. Now Ravi takes 12 minutes for the same and and they both start at the same point. So Ravi is taking 12 minutes. Okay. And Ravi is also starting from the same point. So I will just write Ravi name also over here. And Ravi will also go in the same direction. And they go in the same direction. So how in after how many minutes will they meet again? This is what we will have to find. Okay. So instead of going for the... So of course they will be taking some round... Okay, so what I will assume, I will assume that let's Sonia meets Ravi after 18 rounds, sorry, after X rounds. Okay, and let's Ravi meet Sonia after y rounds 
so if sonia is meeting ravi after x round so like what is the total time so in one round she is taking 18 minutes so total time will be 18 multiplied by x which is 18 x minute she will take correct and ravi is meeting her after 12 minutes uh, ravi is meeting her after y rounds and in one round he is taking 12 minutes so how many total minutes so total minutes he will take is 12 times y which is 12 y minutes correct so it means sonia is meeting ravi after 18x minute and ravi is meeting sonia after 12 y minutes what does that mean it, it means that both minutes means 18x and 12y are same they are equal correct so how they will be equal can anyone tell me so it means so 18x and 12y so what will be the number how will you find number so what you will have to do you will have to do the prime factorization of 18x and 12y okay so after doing the prime factorization of 18x and 12y you will have you will have to find what common multiples what you will have to find common multiples okay then only you will be able to find it <coughs> So and com so there will be so many common multiples. There will be so many common multiples. But what you will have to find? They are saying that after how many minutes will they meet again? Means the first common multiple they are asking. So you can write it over here that the least common multiple. And what is your least common multiple? Least common multiple is nothing but your LCM. Means you will simply you will have to find the LCM of eighteen and twelve. That's it. That's your solution. So let's find the LCM of 18 and 12. So what will be the prime factor of 18? So I'll just write inside this. So 18 will be so 2 times 3 times 3 and 12. 12 will be yours. 2 times 2 times 3. So LCM says common multiple. So LCM will be so the least uh, the highest power. So highest power of Two is two square multiplied by three square, so which is four times nine. That is equal to thirty-six minutes. So you can write your answer that after how many minutes? Means after thirty-six minutes they will meet again at the starting point. That's your answer. That's it. That's your exercise one point two. Okay. So in this video we will just covering exercise one point two. and in the next class i will be starting with the introduction part of next exercise which is 1.3 all right kids so please subscribe the channel and turn the notification on so that as soon as i will upload the next video you will get notified and you can start learning start studying by yourself and also please make sure to like and share this video so that the other students okay they are also get benefited because of this okay and if you are having any doubts please 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 write, send those doubts in the comment section or you can send me an email to where info at the rate rapidgyan.com r a p i d rapid gyan.com all right kids see you in the next class